I've eaten a whole box of cookies. I've eaten all this candy, all these chips. Before I know it, I look back and I'm like, who ate all that? <laughs> like, it couldn't be just me. Like, no. Hey, my beauty. So as you can tell by the title, this video is about how I stopped overcomplicating weight loss and my fitness journey and was able to lose 30 pounds. And I'm going to share my journey and things that I learned along the way that helped me to lose the weight and keep the weight off. And I know that we hear so many different things from so many different fitness influencers and what you should and should not do. And it just seems like a plethora of information and you don't know which way to turn or listen to. But I'm going to share with you my journey and how I stopped overcomplicating it with like diets and listening to different gurus, but really getting down to basic things that helped really be the game changer for me losing weight. And if you're new here, my name's Coco. I talk all things fitness, self-development. I'm also a registered nurse. So make sure to join the tribe and subscribe. And also make sure to like this video for more content just like this. So we're going to get right into it. And the very first thing that I did to help my fitness journey to stop overcomplicating it was just to learn that I simply needed to be more active. I was sitting down more than I was doing anything else throughout the day. And, you know, sometimes we just feel like, oh my gosh, losing weight is so complicated. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm reaching a plateau. And we're going to the gym and making that the only time that we're active throughout the day. Like, yes, going to the gym is definitely a great thing. You know, carving out that time in your day and deciding that you're going to dedicate that to working out. But only looking at it as like that is the only time that you need to move for the entire day and you don't need to work out at all or move your body at all for the rest of the day is like a weird way that I was looking at it, you know, and dedicating only that time. And like, as long as I do that, I don't have to do anything else. But you know, if I'm just going to the gym a couple times a week, and I'm burning like, I don't know, 200, 300 calories, and then I'm sitting down the rest of the day, and then I'm eating whatever I want, then yeah, I might not be seeing any results, you know, no matter how long I do that for, right? So there's other things that need to change. And so when I realized that I needed to simply move my body more and not be so rigid and overcomplicated and like, okay, I work out at the gym and that's it. Like, no, there are so many other ways to just be active throughout the day. And whether that is just walking you know, finding time, whether it's before work, going for a morning walk for 30 minutes, after work, walking for 30 minutes, you know, walking somewhere instead of driving, like I usually do, you know, on my lunch break, you know, going for a walk, maybe for 15 minutes, taking the stairs instead of taking the elevator, you know, parking further away, instead of parking super close, just finding ways to get steps in and like basically learning to stop being so lazy because I think in America, we are so wired to being lazy. Like what is the quickest way to get there? You know, I, you know, is there like, can somebody pick us up like a golf cart? You know what I mean? And that is what has caused me to be so sedentary and not getting any movement in and leading to weight gain when nothing else changes, but like going to the gym here and there. So when I started incorporating just simply getting more movement in and walking and realizing that that is so underrated to simply go walking and get your steps in. And I started aiming for trying to get around 10,000 steps a day and just incorporating it here and there, and also realizing that it doesn't need to be done all at once, right? Because we make it very like tedious, like it's something that we don't look forward to doing and more like dreadful, like, oh, I have to go to the gym. I have to, you know, go do cardio, go on the Stairmaster, but literally simply going for a walk, finding breaks in between. If you have a walking pad or can get one at home and do that while you're just checking emails, just kind of getting steps and movement as much as you can. And that was something that I realized was one of the simplest things that I could do to stop overcomplicating my weight loss and fitness journey. And the next thing was adding to that, 
that there are so many forms of movement that are enjoyable for me that I did not even realize because, you know, I'm so hyper-focused on the traditional ways to get cardio, right? But cardio does not have to be dreadful, right? There are so many fun and exciting ways to get cardio in and that aren't super complicated, right? Again, we don't have to go to the gym to get cardio necessarily, like, you know, and have this one size fits all for everyone's cardio. No, like I had to learn that there are certain forms of cardio that I love to do and I enjoy doing that feel good, that are not dreadful and something that I don't look forward to doing. Like there are so many forms of cardio that are actually fun for me, dancing, going swimming, playing tennis or pickleball. And you would be so shocked at just doing some of these activities, you know, a few times a week, playing basketball with your friends and also joining friends to do these types of things. You would be so surprised that you burn a lot of calories. You do not have to do it in the most traditional way that is something that you do not find enjoyable whatsoever. Like I had to learn, no, I can get my cardio in other ways. Like I can put on a YouTube video and do a dance for, you know, 45 minutes and burn so many calories. You know, I can go swimming and something that's very therapeutic and enjoyable and also burn calories, go for a hike and burn so many calories, right? So it does not have to be going on the Stairmaster, going on the treadmill, using a rower, but you know, something that you know that you can stick to and that's attainable for you. And that's what I learned. And that's what I started to do. Spinning is another really fun thing that I started to incorporate. And, you know, I just love the music that's played with different instructors and the motivation. And so that is something that, that was sustainable for me and that I can continue to do and that I don't dread waking up in the morning to do, right? Like going for a walk, like that's not something that's dreadful, that's therapeutic, but I'm also getting my cardio in a simple, like super non-complicated way. So that was another thing that helped me on my journey is just finding movement that I love to do that made me feel good. And that was not dreadful because it does not have to be dreadful like that. Like, trust me. Okay. Another thing that I had to learn to stop overcomplicating my fitness journey was that I just simply needed to start incorporating more whole foods, like more fruits, more vegetables. You know, there's so many overly processed foods that we eat, that we think are healthy, that we feel see other people eating that's trendy, but like back to the basics again, literally going to get fruits, finding the fruits. There are so many fruits. So if you say like, oh yeah, but I don't want like a banana or apple. Like there are so many different fruits out there, um, you know, that you can choose from and they are healthy and they're filling, they have fiber. So they'll fill you up. They are good for your gut health. So you can use the bathroom regularly and yeah, like there, if you're not a fruit and vegetable person, like I would just say, I would encourage you to explore and try more fruits and vegetables because there's so many, you know, I know that we are used to the basic ones, but there's dragon fruit, mango, apple, orange, whatever for your taste and liking and, you know, explore, have fun with it, you know, find those fruits that are actually enjoyable for you to eat. And once you start to look at it in a way of, you know, this is something you enjoy eating and it's also healthy for you, then you'll start incorporating it more often than not. You know, I think, you know, with candy and all this stuff, like you'd be surprised because fruit is actually nature's candy. And I had to realize that myself because we make everything so much sweeter. Like we get the fruit and then we're like, okay, let's put sugar on the fruit. Let's put honey on the fruit. Like why? It's the fruit. It has that already and is sweet already. So we, we just make everything so much more complicated and we add stuff to things that are naturally already amazing. So that's what I had to realize that I was, you know, overcomplicating things as simple as just eating fruit. Like, no, I do not need to get this sugary acai bowl and put honey and sugar and top it off with this and that. Like literally 
eating the fruit in its whole entirety, you know, the act of just sitting there and biting into an apple, eating that whole thing, like, you know, let's get back to that. Let's get back to the basics. You know, I know it's good too, if you're, you know, press on time and you, you know, make smoothies and things like that. But like the act of, of crunching the apple and just eating that it's like also just helps your brain to realize that you are actively eating, you're getting full. It's like that mind, you know, connection with your food and being really present with it. And also with vegetables, the same thing, you know, like eating vegetables and kind of limiting those processed things that we run to so often, just, you'd be so surprised like when I started incorporating vegetables and, you know, protein, healthy fats, that full meal with all the nutrients necessary, I was getting full, right? And a lot of times I would eat that or, you know, eat something semi-healthy and then not even give my body a chance to digest it and be like, right, going to the next thing before I could even determine that I was full. So that is something that I would say is like actually eating these healthy foods and then taking a moment that I would, would allow me to realize like, hey, like that, I'm actually full. Like I don't need to go back for seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. Like this is filling food because when I would eat more processed foods, that was causing this crazy hunger and cravings that I did not need to have. And then now I am eating like five, six servings for like five, six people when I could just eat something that will be filling and nutritious and allow me to not overindulge. And adding to that, another thing that I had to realize is that I had to be present when I was eating, right? Because the other thing I would do is I'd be eating, but I'd be talking on the phone at the same time, right? I'd be eating and watching my favorite show on TV. And not only am I binge watching, now I'm binge eating because I am not focused on the food, on my meal, and I'm just watching TV and I'm just mindlessly eating, right? And if I did not, you know, pay attention, now I've eaten a whole like box of cookies I've eaten a whole box of cookies. I've eaten all this candy, all these chips. Before I know it, I look back and I'm like, who ate all that? Like, it couldn't be just me. Like, no, it was me. There was no one else there <laughs> helping me to eat that. But that is how absent-minded I could be when I'm just on the phone talking while I'm eating or I'm watching my favorite TV show. Because what happens is like, I'm really into the TV show. And now I'm just like, you know, the habit not even paying attention. I am just kind of going, you know, I'm paying attention to the show and then out of repetition, I'm just continuing to eat mindlessly, not even realizing that I'm probably full and I've eaten way more than necessary. So I had to realize that I had to be quiet and sit by, you know, without distractions and focus on my food, focus on my digestion and, you know, being basically connected to the experience. And, you know, I would, you know, started having to tell my friends, like, you know, I'm about to eat, I'll call you back, because I would literally talk to one of my friends on the phone, while I'm eating, get off the phone, and be like, Oh, did I like not even remembering that I ate like SpongeBob, thinking that Patrick ate his food, because he wasn't paying attention. Like, no, you already ate your food. You know, I don't know if you guys remember that episode on SpongeBob SquarePants, but I always think of that. And that was me. Like, I'm like, did I just, did I eat my dinner already? Yeah, I did. But I was on the phone, not paying attention. Now I would get off the phone. And because I could not connect with the fact that I ate while I was on the phone, now I want to eat something else. Now that I'm off the phone, now I want now I want to, you know, pay attention and hone in to my food and to the process. But now I'm overeating and overindulging because I didn't simply just pay attention to my dinner and pay attention to my eating at that time. So I had to realize that I needed to focus and set that time aside, you know, and just not add in added stress, because also I would realize that 
if I'm talking about a really stressful thing with one of my friends that, you know, that energy that is required to talk about that. Now I'm hungry. Now I want to eat. Now I'm eating more. So basically using that time of eating as like, you know, a, you know, a, a sacred time for myself to focus and be at peace. And that's my relaxation. And I just focus to know what's going into my mouth and just being like at one with my food is something that really helped me to stop overcomplicating and overindulging in food. So that was really another big game changer. And the next was not like overcomplicating my workouts. So I definitely realized that strength training was something that is very important to incorporate into my weight loss and fitness journey and building muscle because muscle burns fat and it's a really added necessary component that I had to incorporate into my diet instead of just going and doing cardio only and losing weight, but not necessarily losing fat because I want to lose fat and build muscle and not just, just lose weight and be a very small weight. I want to lose fat and build muscle. So I had to realize that, you know, sometimes I would go to the gym and I'm thinking that I need to do 30 different exercises because I see all these different things online, all these different workouts, but no, you can, I learned that I could literally go to the gym and focus on, you know, three to four workouts and focus on those for that workout session and do my repetition of those, whether it's like three sets of eight to 12 or something like that. But four different exercises for that workout session of strength training session was more than enough because I would think like, okay, I need to go on every single machine when I come to the gym and you know I need to do 10 different exercises when I do my strength training but I realized that I was overcomplicating that and that I realized that I could focus on about four different exercises instead of you know trying to work out you know every different type of workout I've seen online and also trying to do every different machine in the gym but not only that, but also realizing that I did not need to do that every day, right? I know we see these, I know we see so many things that talks about team no sleep and, you know, just basically, you know, no days off and working out every day, but no, rest is so, so, so necessary. And I can't emphasize that enough when I get ample sleep and I'm getting eight hours of rest and I am taking a rest day or two from the gym and I'm not working out and, you know, over exercising every single day or feeling like there, I have to work out every day, that that is also when I started to see results because muscles have to have time to recover. That is when they rebuild because we cause micro tears in our muscles when we work out. And so they have to repair. And so they repair during recovery. And so that was something that I had to realize, like I was going way too much, going every single day, you know, of course we all have goals and we want to reach those goals as quick as possible. So sometimes it feels like, okay, I'm going every day until the summer, or I'm going every day until this event I'm having, or, you know, whatever the case may be, I want to get in shape or whatever the case may be, or just in general, just wanting to get to that goal sooner than later. But I had to realize, you know, it takes time and the fitness journey, getting into shape, getting fit is a lifestyle to stay that way. So realizing that it is a journey and it's not a marathon is something that I really had to realize and that I don't need to be at the gym twice a day every single day because it's not sustainable. And this is something that I want to incorporate into my life for the long term and permanently, because even once I achieve my dream ideal fitness level, I still would want to maintain that. So if I reach it in an unhealthy way, then once I get there, then I'll stop and I'm going to pull back some because I'm like, okay, I finally made it here. And now I can just relax and I can go back to how I was eating. I can go back to, you know, not working out at all. So as I realized, just making it a more sustainable lifestyle change 
and incorporating it into my life where it makes sense and I'm not overstraining myself and, you know, doing things that are unrealistic or unsustainable, trying to work out every single day, but instead making it something that is sustainable for the long term. So doing strength training like three to five times a week, but not like seven days a week. And then also eating foods that I enjoy. So again, it was a journey of exploring and finding what I love and what works for me and what I can incorporate for longevity. So foods that I will love down the road as well. So not doing fat diets, diets that I uh, can do for like a month, but after the month, I go right back to what I was doing before. I know one time I did keto and that was one of the hardest things to stay in. And it was very, it was like almost unattainable to do long term, I realized for myself. So I had to break away from that and do something that was more attainable for me and realistic that I know that in the long run, I will be able to stick to and that this is something that will be a lifestyle change. So down the road, long term, like these will be healthy foods that I love that I don't feel like I'm forcing myself to eat that I don't actually enjoy. But that's because I went on a journey of exploring the foods and things that I loved. And it was not foods that were like torturous or like I'm, you know, basically like scrunching on my face out like I don't want to eat but foods that I determined that I love that I didn't even know, you know, there's so many vegetables that I discovered and fruits that I discovered that were never something that I ate before. But after discovering them now, like I couldn't picture, you know, not eating them ever. So those were some of the things that I did to stop overcomplicating my fitness journey. And I hope that these resonate with you. Let me know down in the comments which of these you plan to incorporate or which resonated the most with you. And like I said, also, um, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. See you next.